a student at SCF and I'm in this speech course and this is my speech on putting an end to offshore drilling. Go to the next slide. Alright, so as we know, the world runs off energy and a huge chunk of that comes from petroleum products, or in other words, oil. I want everybody to take a second and think about the products and uh, machinery that we use every day that uh, uses some sort of petroleum-based product to function. Most people think, you know, car, gasoline, motor oil, things like that. But actually, uh, oils in everyday products such as basketballs, curtains, and soap, which kind of explains when you wash your hands, soap uh, doesn't clean oil off. There's actually oil contained in most soaps. So in reality, it's kind of astonishing to think about how many products oil is in and how much we depend on it. So um, some petroleum extraction methods, the main two forms are land-based drilling and offshore drilling, which is the process we're going to be going over today. Go to the next slide. All right, so um, according to the National Resource Defense Council, our oceans are suffering due to our massive energy needs. When we burn fossil fuels, we don't just pollute the air, but the oceans as well. Actually, today's seas absorb as much as a quarter of all man-made carbon emissions, which uh, changes the pH of the surface water and leads to acidification. And this is a direct cause of our coral reefs dying. And uh, this can be caused by the oil we put into the water system. And um, one of the major things is that fossil fuels is a multi-billion dollar industry. So people don't really care about how, what methods we use to extract it. There are some precautionary uh, restrictions on the offshore drilling process, but now nowhere near as much as it should be because more people are concerned about our need for the oil instead of how we get it. Um, also, an article from the World Ocean Review talks about all of the uh, bad things that oil can do in our water system. And as we all know, oil and water doesn't mix. It's an old science project that we all did when we were younger. And it can actually slowly kill and suffocate our animals because of this, because the oil won't mix with the water. So when they swim through the oil, it gets all that sludge into their gill systems and mammals as well into their lungs, and they actually suffocate because of it. Go to the next slide. So a cause, a direct link for our oceans dying is offshore drilling. But before we can actually blame it completely on that, we have to talk about the process of offshore drilling and what it is. So according to an article of, uh, entitled Offshore Drill by Student Energy, offshore drilling is the process of extracting oil from the seabed. And this is done on oil rigs, and they're placed near continental shelves or major currents. And the kind of a concerning fact that most people don't think about is because it's near these continental shelves and these major currents, if there is an oil spill, the water or the oil can be quickly sucked up into the currents and pushed in high volume amounts all around the world. And this can lead to extreme environmental harm. And um, it does this because oil simply pollutes our water system. It helps to kill many of our loved and endangered species, such as whales, manatees, dolphins, and sea turtles. And it can actually lead to uh, economical harm and community harm as well. And this is demonstrated by um, the National Oceanic and Atmos Atmospheric Administration. And it says that it can actually dip tourism, which Florida, we've seen this firsthand when the BP oil spill occurred. It hurt our tourism industry and our fishing industry, which are two huge uh, major impacts on coastal communities. Go to the next slide. So, according to the Union of Concerned Scientists, the uh, Deepwater Horizon, which was the BP oil spill, was an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico, and it was a catastrophic event. It was the biggest spill recorded in U.S. history, and there was more than 134 million gallons of oil spilled over an 87-day time span. And it actually desecrated 16,000 miles of coastline, which is tremendous. And as I said, in Florida, we experienced this firsthand. I'm sure many of you have uh, seen pictures of oil washing ashore on beaches, some of the animals that have died from this. And our economies are still actually recovering now from it, and they're just getting back to what they used to be from before for as far as the tourism industry and things like that. Go to the next slide. So in conclusion, our solution, really, it just, uh, it just ends up coming down to using clean, renewable energy. And uh, the first step to process that is actually stopping offshore drilling, in my personal opinion, because it's one of the more unnecessary ways of extracting oil. We have other means. But ways of obtaining clean energy would just be wind, solar, and natural gas. It could be this through windmills, solar. Florida does this pretty well. We have a lot of solar panels. But unfortunately, the damage that we have caused is already irreversible for some of the environment. But we should take these precautionary measures to further prevent damage that could be happening in the future.
Um, so we should really take this opportunity to work towards cleaner, renewa renewable energy. So in conclusion, as you may have seen from this, oil spills are catastrophic. They're just more risk than they're worth as far as offshore drilling is concerned. They just cause so much damage to the environment. And they damage our ocean's health, our wildlife, and our local communities. And unfortunately, we don't really start to act until it actually does damage our local communities, because then it's directly affecting us. So change needs to happen, and it needs to start with everyday people like you and I. If uh, one person makes a change, others will follow. We need to start acting and trying to preserve our oceans and our great planet, because thousands of animals are suffering for our thirst for an easy source of energy. There's other sources out there that might not be as easy and as accessible, but they're available to us. We need to make a change, and I know some of you might be thinking that I'm only one person, how can I make a difference? Well, it only takes one to start something, and one can turn to many to really make a change. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.